Today is the day I'm going to make a pair of earrings. What I'm doing right now is choosing the sizes for the pearls that I'm going to use for the dangling earrings. I need three different sizes of pearls. This is a 24 gauge half inch ball pin. I will thread this through the smallest pearl, which will be the bottom piece of the earring, and then create a loop to connect it with the rest. I'm marking this round nose plier with a felt pen. This will be my guide for the uniformity of the loop connections. The loop sizes and shapes won't be perfect, but at least they'll be close to it. These pearls with wire loops were extras from my previous projects. However, since the wires and loops are not the correct sizes, they need to be removed. Smaller pearls usually have small holes. This 24 gauge half hard sterling silver wire is perfect for this project. I need to straighten this wire a little as it is easier to work with than curved or bent wire. thread each pearl with a wire and create loops on each end to connect each one to the other. Except for the bottom last pearl, which will have one loop on one end and a tiny metal ball on the other end. Wire cutters usually cut one end of the wire with a flush cut and the other end with a sharp or pointy wire. Before I start working with a wire, I always make a small cut just to ensure that I am working with a flush cut wire. To create a simple loop, I would start by bending the end of the wire at approximately a 90 degree angle. Then, I would use round nose pliers to form and complete the loop.
To create a loop on the other end of the bead, I would cut the wire at approximately 1 fourth inch. This will depend on the size of the loop that is being created. The bigger the loop, the longer the wire needed. Next, I would bend the wire at about a 90 degree angle just above the bead. Finally, I would use the round nose pliers to complete the loop. Sometimes, some adjustment is needed when the loops that were created are facing different directions. In the end, the loops should be facing the same direction for consistency. Now that every pearl has the necessary loops, it is time to connect each one of them to each other. To connect the beads, the loop of one bead has to be opened, and the loop end of the other bead needs to be inserted. To secure the connection, the open bead needs to be closed. Now that the dangling parts are assembled, I need to make ear hooks. To make the hooks, the wire needs to be sturdier than the 24 gauge wire. So I'm going to use this 19 gauge sterling silver wire, which is a lot thicker than the 24 gauge wire. I am going to start by making a small loop at one end of the wire using the round nose pliers. This is where the pearls are going to dangle or hang. After making the loop, I am going to use the bail making pliers to form the hook. The pliers have two different mandrel sizes with one being smaller than the other. Whenever I make a pair of earring hooks, I always use the bigger mandrel.
I always compare the two hooks together, making sure that they are the same in size or close to it. The cut wires are sometimes sharp. To prevent any injury when wearing handmade earring hooks, the edges of the wire need to be filed with a metal file. To connect the earring hook and the pearls together, I am going to twist open the loop in the earring hook, then twist it back to close. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends. Your comments would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to click the notification bell to stay updated. Again, thank you and until next time, bye bye!